All right. So our goal is to take our creature and then make a gray layer behind it that we burn and dodge to match the lighting of the scene, including shadows underneath our creature. And then when we set that gray layer to a layer style of overlay or a layer mode of overlay, it will blend in with our environment. So let me show you how we do that. I have my creature placed. I have it sunk underneath some texture. I've brought in some elements on top of my creature, right? But I'm going to go to my creature layer and then go to one layer underneath it. And I might decide even to dim this eventually. Now I'm going to create a new layer using the little post-it stamp in the, the layer window, post-it icon. And then I'm going to say edit, fill, 50% gray, normal mode, 100%. Fill a new layer with 50% gray. So on top of that, you can see the texture fills that are active right now. I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to touch those. Though I might decide, oh, they're a little harsh. So I could edit them. And in this case, I'll use a soft, low opacity eraser and kind of hit this edge a little bit on that texture fill. Because textures are supposed to be, especially this mist, hard to detect, right? I'm not going to worry about this yet. What I am going to do, in fact, I'll just turn that off for now, is I want to paint a shadow underneath. So, but we're not allowed to paint. We're still compositing. So how do I darken the gray layer? Well, I'm going to use the dodge and burn tools. So to burn a shadow, I'm going to go to burn. I'm going to say midtones. I'm going to make it nice and big and soft, right? And I'm going to make it less than a 30 per exposure. And I'm going to start darkening. Start painting in a shadow especially d sharpest and darkest where my creature is actually hitting the ground, where they're making contact. And the closer my creature is to what the shadow that it's creating, the darker that, that shadow is going to be. So I'm just burning the gray. And if it helps you to see it more clearly, you can... You know what? I'm doing it on the wrong layer. Ah, that's why history is important. I'm doing it on the texture fill layer. So I want to go all the way back in my history. That's why we save 500 states, not the standard 50. And I move <laughs> to my overlay layer. And this won't be quite so difficult because that gray gives me lots of pixels to do a shadow with. All right, so now I'm really, I'm going to overdo it a little bit. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And we tend to do that when we dodge and burn anyway. So I'm going to really deepen the shadows, especially where it's close to um, making contact. Right. And then if I'm worried that it looks too sharp, I can always filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur it. But because my creature is pretty close to the ground, I don't want to blur it too much. Maybe about there. Definitely hit it underneath the feet, underneath the claws. I can even kind of shape it to the claws if you see that. All right, so now, I guess his neck is a little bit lower than his belly. Now, just to show you how that works on the landscape, if I change it from normal mode to overlay mode, all the 50% gray will disappear, but the shadow will remain. 
and I can put that red can in there still. And you can see I want the shadow to affect the red can. So how can I get it to do that? Well, I can push the red can beneath, right? But I still need the tip of the red can to be over the foot. So this is an instance where I might take the foot from my smart layer and just duplicate that. And then I can put the red can Oh, that doesn't make sense. Never mind. <laughs> what do I need to do? So what I all I need of this red can layer, I can erase away now to reveal the shadow. There we go. And I get to kind of paint that in. And if I do that, let me do that again to show you. If I do that with a sharper edged eraser, I can even kind of shape the shadow a little bit. See where it's catching light now here. Then I can use that same, same layer to erase away at a higher opacity. To show the foot. I also have some nice shadow reference right here that shows me how dark it can get. So what if I um, want that shadow to be even stronger? Well, this is what I can do. I can change my overlay layer back to normal. I can select with the magic wand and turn contiguous off all the middle gray and then select inverse. So I just have my shadow and then duplicate that onto its own layer. Change the, the gray layer back to overlay and then change my shadow layer to multiply mode, right? Which will only darken. And then I can take that and take its opacity down until it matches the lighting. So that's a little bit closer. Now the only problem with that is it's a little too sharp in some places. So now I use my eraser, soft edged, and I keep it sharp where I think it needs to be sharp, but I'll hit it at little spots so it's not so overwhelming. Now, what if I want to dodge and burn on top of my creature, right? Because if this is the lighting and it's such a deep shadow, then it seems like this should be in shadow a little bit more. This should be in shadow a little bit more. But I don't want to actually affect my creature. I want to keep it as a smart layer. So I'm going to do a new layer on top of my creature. And we'll do this same sort of dodging and burning by saying edit fill 50% gray, 100% change it to overlay mode and now I can dodge and burn I'll burn first right on this layer I'll mark it green so you can see and it can get confusing but we've done enough with layers now that I'm going to burn the underside a little bit burn the arm a little bit burn this claw right now I'm burning the midtones that's always a good place to start but now I'm making the lighting kind of match the environment a little bit better. And then burning the midtones will go to about 50%. It will affect the things that are 50%, about 30% to 70% in value. But like the scales here that are really bright, then I have to burn highlights to darken those. That gets a little tougher.
And for something like that, what I might want to do is take a section of my overlay layer, duplicate it, make it normal, right? And then multiply, and then erase away. and play with the opacity. So we really do have full control. That's why Photoshop's so amazing. And I can blur it as well if I feel it's, it's too hard-edged. Because we're just playing with grays, with values. That's all. I feel like I can still burn this a little bit more. Oh, I don't want to erase. <laughs> I don't want to burn. And but instead of highlights, well yeah, I can burn the highlights a little. Oh, wrong layer. There we go. So you can see why we didn't do this right at the beginning, because there's a lot of kind of particulars to it. But we should have enough practice now to be able to do these kind of trickier um, layer organization adjustments. So this is the difference between a direct adjustment and what's called a layer adjustment, right? Because these gray layers, these overlay layers that I'm adding, they affect everything underneath, but they don't actually they just make it, it's like a filter you're looking through. They don't hurt the pixels underneath. They just adjust them. Okay. Let's see, what else might I want? I think I'm going to want to copy out a little bit of my effects on this claw. Duplicate that from my adjustment layer, and then set it to multiply. Set it first to, to normal so you can see it, then to multiply. See how that gives it a shadow, and then erase away. And blur it a little bit. And I'm going to erase away at a lower opacity basically taking the opacity down of this shadow. Because sometimes you need more shadow than you can get from just 50% gray. Then I think same thing with this back leg. Take a big chunk of this. Duplicate it from my adjustment layer. Set it to normal so you can see it. It's a big chunk like that. Set it to multiply. Makes it really dark. Take that down. Opacity-wise, blur it out so the edges aren't so sharp. And then erase away where it's too strong. The low opacity. This is how we can put a lot of drama into it. It also shows me I want to burn the tail here. Can't forget that. And then on the belly, I think I want to burn these highlights a little bit more, where the spikes are. They're catching, they're catching some light. I don't know. This might not be necessary, but I can always try it. So I just duplicate that already darkened it quite a bit. Set it to normal so you can see what I'm doing. Set it to multiply. And then blur it. Blur it even more. Well, no, that's good. Then erase. and then take the opacity down until it's matching what I want. Okay. So that's looking more and more believable.